To say that everything is permitted is to understand that we are the architects of our actions. Ubisoft is definitely the architect of theirs. Assassin's Creed was one of the most iconic gaming franchises I grew up with since childhood. <laughs> As Ubisoft shifted from trailblazers to trend chasers, myself and others were growing distant from the franchise, especially after an empty game like Valhalla. Yet Ubisoft seemed to recently shift their games in a direction to return to AC's roots. From my last video, a number of hidden ones had mixed responses on the future of Assassin's Creed. Some of you hoped that Ubisoft would remake the old Assassin's Creed games. Others stated that the characters and stories were were reasons the games resonated with them more. And you are right. A game's protagonist is like planks holding a boat together. With a bad protagonist, Ubisoft just has a boat of holes. Ubisoft indeed delivered on some of their protagonists in the Assassin's Creed series. Connor Kenway, Edward Kenway, Altair, Bayek, and especially Ezio, their poster child in their marketing, promo, and theme song. Ezio may seem overrated to a few, but I would say he was the most defensive definitive assassin carrying the franchise on his shoulders. Fans have even gone to lengths to name their kids after him. However, why is he the most beloved AC character in the franchise? Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and today we're going to talk about the origins of Ezio Auditore and if Ubisoft will ever create a protagonist more compelling than Ezio in Assassin's Creed Red and future games. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! Especially if you are an Assassin's Creed fan. Look out! I know I have not visited in a while, but it is no cause to shoot me. Ezio Auditore di Firenze was a character that resonated with us the most because we observed his youth, adulthood, middle age, and death in his strongest and lowest times. While Altair was the first assassin I played as, I connected with Ezio more due to his humane personality. While Altair trained his whole life as an assassin, Ezio was unaware of his assassin's heritage growing up as an Italian nobleman in Florence with his family until the attack on his villa. He was a charming, charismatic, and humorous young man. What the? But he was also reckless in his youth during his hedonistic lifestyle, spending money on either woman or wine. After witnessing his family get hung by a Templar, he gradually changed by becoming wiser but also more lethal and deadly. We understood his pain and rage from losing his family and observed the beginning of his quest for vengeance and rite of passage in the Assassin's Brotherhood in Monterigione. Ezio hunts down each man responsible for his family's murder while gaining allies like Leonardo da Vinci, Caterina Savorza, and Lorenzo de' Medici. Ezio was intent on not only becoming an assassin but to avenge his family and seek justice above all. Eventually in his quest for vengeance with the help of his allies, he learned that his family's murder was just a small piece of the Templar's puzzle, Borgia's plan to control humanity with the Apple of Eden. After the final battle with Borgia, he and his sister Claudia were inducted into the Brotherhood. Then in Brotherhood, after the death of Ezio's uncle Mario, it's -a me and Caesar retaking the apple. Ezio flees to Rome to finish the job he started, rebuilding the assassin's order and crippling Borgia control over the capital. <laughs> Then revelations occurred where Ezio reclaims the secrets of the assassins originally led by Altair in Maziaf. Then in Constantinople, he finds the keys that lock the underground library containing secrets he seeks. Upon retrieving each of the keys, Ezio sees glimpses into the life of Altair and finds the last key in the Apple of Eden once again. He knew what harm the apple could do and left it behind with Altair. He retired from the Brotherhood to be with his wife and family. But before retirement, he left a message for Desmond Miles, his descendant in modern day. Despite the harsh path of Ezio Auditore, he had the sliver of self-consciousness within himself to do what is right or wrong. Overall, this was why we were able to connect with Ezio's character the most. Why the old games have worked. Here is the important question though. Could Ubisoft create a better protagonist than Ezio Auditore in future Assassin's Creed games including Red? 
Ubisoft seem to have replicated Ezio's personality into other characters in their games, but so far none have ever come close to Ezio. Of course I cherish the other characters in the Assassin's Creed games greatly. Altair taught me leadership and strength. Connor taught me hope and persistence. Bayek taught me to be kind to those who deserve it. And Edward taught me that pirate swagger. Yet Ezio will always be the most impactful to me, as he taught me to think before I act, as I am the architect of my own actions and also going after my purpose. It's possible for Ubisoft to create a protagonist that's better than Ezio in future games as they have the materials. It will take quite a masterpiece to do so, but I'm hoping they'll be able to achieve this in red, creating a protagonist that sticks to the AC roots but also has a uniqueness to them, a unique protagonist we can both resonate with and recognize as an assassin. A lot of hype in the AC community surrounded this long-awaited Assassin's Creed Ninja game, but there were mixed opinions surrounding the protagonists Yasuke and Naoi. One side stated that Ubisoft is going woke, while the other is excited to see a real history historical figure in the game. Based on the leaks, this project could be pushed to 2025, as it is a huge game we would have to spend extra hours grinding and leveling up in, like Odyssey. But most likely we'll know more about the game in the Ubisoft Forward event as well as Assassin's Creed Hex and Jade. But you know what? After Mirage and Nexus, I'm staying hopeful for Assassin's Creed Red, even if it may seem delusional to some. Connor said it's better to have faith in something than nothing at all. So why not listen to him? Yet I do believe it's possible for Ubisoft to actually create a fantastic Assassin's Creed game that both sticks to the roots and provides historical uniqueness this is what I hope for for the future of Assassin's Creed. Ubisoft developing a series of AC games on a story that's both consistent and enjoyable to fans. I want them to focus on building upon one protagonist or even just remaking the old Assassin's Creed games. You guys had some good ideas on what Ubisoft could do in the future. Why not have a sequel for Connor Kenway? Why not have a Black Flag remake? We have Skull and Bones as a game, but I would honestly rather play Black Flag or a continuation of Bayek's story if they're planning on sticking with the RPG route. If Ubisoft is continuing those modern-day segments in AC games, why not connect them back to Desmond Miles? There are so many ideas Ubisoft can execute, but because there were multiple studios, it was difficult for them to have one focus with their AC games. From what I remember, some studios haven't had experience with playing AC games. Here is my analogy of my opinion of the current state of AC games when the RPGs were released. The studios were like multiple slices of the same pie that chose to work separately on different projects. Huh? Because if a price is charged separately for each slice of pie, then they would assume more revenue would be generated in comparison to the whole pie. But what they forgot was that they were on the same plate. They should be sharing the same goal. Seeing that Ubisoft is coordinating ideas with them, we can hope the slices will return to the pie, forming one idea as a whole, keeping the roots of the creed alive. So what are your opinions on Assassin's Creed's future? And who is your favorite Assassin's Creed character? Do you have high expectations for Assassin's Creed Red? Let me know your opinions below. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. I'll always lend an ear to listen to more opinions of more hidden ones. Thank you for watching, and that's all.